Let's start with the line top. It will represent, well, one line. Now it's made of two points and I want to increase this number because we'll be distorting it later. Let it be 100. Let's also centrify the line by making it go from minus 0.5 to 0.5. Next we add a noise stop. And it doesn't make anything because the line normals are zero for each point. So the easiest solution that I found for that is selecting the attribute point normals first, type random. So we randomize the normals first and then add another noise stop. And it will work as intended. Let's tweak the parameters just a bit. I don't need animation here, so I'll choose this animated parameter and switch to the constant. So that's just one stroke, and before we make the line smooth, let's create another strokes. Add a copy sub. Set the number of copies that you need, I'll make three, and we already have all of them here, but they are located at the same place. Since I want to place them one above another, I need to translate vertically. Now we've just copied the line, but I want each of them look differently. For example, I would like the seed parameter of the second noise differ for each line. To do that, I go to the copy stop, stamp tab, and enable stamp inputs. It will allow me to set some parameters that will rewrite the previous parameters in the chain. In this case, I need just one parameter, let's call it index. Now let's go to the noise stop, seed parameter, enable scripting, and write the simple script. Fetch stamp is returning the value under the name index, and if it doesn't find it, it will return 1 the default value. And now if we go back to the copy shop, we see that we can set the seed parameter here. To make this parameter different for each copy, we can, for example, take the index of each copy and set it as a value that we send to the noise. That's easy. Enable scripting and type me.copyindex. Well, right, that's good, but the first two lines look the same. That's because the copy sop counts indexes starting from zero, while the minimum value of the noise seed parameter is one. So it takes the default value. You can either change this default value or go to the copy and type plus one here. Now it will count indexes from one. To make this look more like a writing, we need to smooth angles. Add a convert sop and choose convert to norms curve. You can also try busier curve. Add a new and call it shape. The very basic setup would be to add a geometry component next, a render top, and a camera. I set it to orthographic. Add a constant material and apply it to the geometry. Then let's add the RGB key top to fill the background and an out top. Let's centrify the geometry. Also, we can increase the amplitude of the noise. In this piece, I want lines to feel more natural, like if they were drawn with a chalk or with a pencil. When I was thinking of how to achieve this, I decided to make it the same way as it is made in Photoshop, Procreate, or other software for digital painting. The principle behind it is quite simple. We have to take a tiny rectangle or circle, apply a texture to it, and draw it so many times that it will replicate the initial shape. 
and that's exactly how the instancing works. Let's create a rectangle top and make it like 0 0.0010 and connect it instead of our shape. Let's place it here. Now we need to convert the shape's vertexes to numbers. Add sop to chop, then no, and call it pause. Now we go to the geometry component and enable instancing. Drag the pause operator here and don't forget to set the channel names. Now it looks weird, and that's because the convert sub that we used to create curves doesn't make vertexes or the points to follow the curve. To distribute these points evenly along the curve, we need to add a refined sub. Here I have to increase the U divisions value. I'll go with 3000, but you can put less in case your computer is not very powerful. In general, I recommend you to be careful when working with SOPs. Uh, when you do something unfamiliar, just put a lower values and then increase them gradually until you like the result that your computer can handle. Let's also set the subdivide method. Now I want to apply the texture. Create a ramp top, set its type to circular, extend left hold and tweak the gradient a little to create more distinctive white circle yet keeping a slight gradient. It doesn't have to be precise. Next, create a noise stop and adjust its parameters to look like this. Add a multiply top and connect circle and noise to it. Attach to the material. Go to the common tab and enable blending. Set the destination color to 1. And we hardly see any difference for now because the same texture is applied for each instance. So let's randomize it. Create a pattern top, set its type to random, then go to the channel tab and type urand and vrand, for example. It will create two channels with random values. Add a null and call it like text UV. We will refer to this operator inside the geometry, but to make it work, its channels should have the same length as the post chop. I usually do it this way. Add an info chop, attach it to the sub chop, select length over here, and this is the number of instances that we have. Now go to the pattern chop and set the chop reference in the length channel. Now we can attach our texture coordinates here. Set the texture mode to transform. Alright, now let's vary the line's thickness. To do that, we simply have to change the scale of the instances. Create another pattern chop. Set the length. Let's rename the channel. Create a null. Call it scale and attach to the geometry the same way we did it with the position. Now we can adjust the pattern parameters. Let's add one more pattern chop here. Make it ramp. 
and set the length to 2. Then put a math job, multiply, Now I feel like adding some background to it. Add a noise top. I will adjust its parameters to make the slightly visible light spots. I will also change the resolution. Add the composite top and choose lighter color. Next I want to add sort of a grain effect. So I'll create another noise and you can connect it straight away. Type random. and decrease the amplitude to make the grain slightly visible. And that's it. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, leave them in the comments so I will try my best to answer. And see you in the next tutorial. Bye!